We are live. It is Wednesday, 8 p.m. coming to you live. And I'm going to go over um, in this video. I'm going to give it 10 seconds or so. But if you're watching the replay, this video, I'm going to go over something very, very important that a lot of new vendors um, get wrong. You know, over the course of the last couple of months working with a number of uh, people, what I'm going to talk about is something that I've seen as a pattern that continues uh, to come up. So I'm going to give it just a little bit here, but we're going to get into it. If you are um, watching and you have any questions, please drop them in the uh, comments and we'll get to that um, a little bit later after I go through the three things that are the main issue, um, really, really huge issue that I see with new vendors. So let's see, 801, we're going to get started here in just a second. Amy is in the building. Thanks for the heart. That is my wife, that support, that family support. Raymond from Ottawa, Canada. Pretty cool, all the way from Ottawa. Again, if you're new to the channel, my name is Adam. Uh, I have a vending business here in Tampa Bay, Florida. We have about 100 snack and drink machines and um, we're doing record numbers in January and February of this year before COVID hit. And then, uh, kind of got knocked down a little bit about half of what we're doing now. We're about 75% of, um, of capacity. But my goal with this channel is to share my perspective on the vending industry and, uh, see what you guys think about that. So again, in this video, let's jump right into it. Let's get that out of here. Okay, Ron in the building. Thanks for watching, guys. And Lola and Lula from New Jersey checking in. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so uh, the pattern, the big mistake that I see a number of new vendors making is is this. It is letting the account dictate uh, three things: uh, terms, machines, and products. Okay, and what do I mean by that? When you're just getting started in vending and you're going to a potential account, letting that account dictate and tell you um, how many machines they need, the terms, um, and the products that they want in those machines. Now, being new to the vending business, you may not be familiar with this. So you might let them take the lead. You might let them take the lead and, uh, and tell you, how many machines they want, what they want in the machines and all these terms. The problem is they don't know what they're talking about. And if you don't know what you're talking about, you could lose a lot of money by letting them lead you down a very unprofitable path. So that is the huge mistake that I see. Number one is uh, machines. Now, what, am I, what do I mean by machines? Well, I'll give you an example. There was a hotel here in Tampa that had uh, 10 floors, 10 stories, and they wanted um, a machine on every floor where they just needed a machine, a snack machine and a drink machine in the lobby is, is what they needed. Um, but they felt that they needed a drink machine for every, uh, for every floor, which to them, they don't care about. And if you're buying these machines and not getting them through Coke or Pepsi, that can be, uh, you know, three thousand dollars per machine. That's thirty thousand dollars in equipment for an account that doesn't need that much equipment. So that's the first thing: is machines. The majority of the time, it's going to be overkill. They are going to uh, want overkill on their machines. They're going to want two. If it's not a hotel, if it's a, if it's an office building, which are getting crushed right now with COVID, um, they're going to want two in this break room. Then they're going to want two over in in the uh, in the other break room, which instead of having people uh, walk ten steps the other direction, they're going to want you to spend five ten thousand dollars on machines so that their employees don't have to walk um, a little bit farther. So that's a really big um, number one is machines. And what happens is is if you over service. The, this account with machines, let's say you put in 10 machines at three grand a piece, $30,000 worth of machines, and it doesn't produce the revenue. 
who has to eat that loss? The vendor does. So if you put in $30,000 of machines at that hotel, which we had to turn down, which we didn't take because it didn't make sense. If you have to, if you have to buy those machines and they don't produce enough revenue to, if you're financing, make it the payment, make the payment on the machines or to uh, make it a viable account worth your time, a profitable account, they don't lose any money. You're the one who loses. So um, that's that's the first thing is machines. Most accounts are going to want to to overkill it on the machines. It's your responsibility to become educated and know how to know how many machines an account needs. So if you can figure that out, that's going to help you um, help you a lot with overcoming this mistake. And if you're just joining, again, drop your questions in the comments if you have any. After I get through these um, other two points, then we will uh, open it up for a little Q&A. Excited to be back. I'm going to start doing some more live YouTubes um, going forward so that we can really help, uh, help spread the information on vending machines because who knows, vending may be the future in this post-current COVID world. You know, as a side note, before I get into those two, before I get into those two, check this out. I'm going to I'm going to get into the other two reasons, which are terms and products, which is the big mistake that potential accounts are dictating to you. Again, if you're just joining, the big mistake that new vendors make is letting the account that you're soliciting or that wants your service dictate the terms, machines and products that go in your vending machines. Huge mistake that will cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. I've made the mistake. And we'll get into the other two in a second, but I saw this today and wanted to, uh, let's see if I can get this up here. Krispy Kreme, look at that guys. Krispy Kreme has now its own vending machine. Krispy Kreme Donuts opened in Charlotte, North Carolina. $5 for one donut. That's pretty cool right there. It looks like they have a Nyack credit card reader on there. But I thought I'd share that with you guys. Krispy Kreme machine in Charlotte. I've never seen one of those before. Hit the heart if you've seen a if you've seen a, a Krispy Kreme machine before, because I haven't. That was on Vending Times uh, website. So, just a little side note for you guys there. Now, um, let's see. I've got a couple other things here. Let's see. So we got to number one. Number one was machines again. Overkill on machines, always start with less machines and tell them you can always add machines if the sales warrant it. So there's a golden nugget for you. If they're asking for uh, 10 machines, say let's start with two. And if the sales warrant it, we can add add more machines as we go. Um, that's a good way to do it. Now, number two, number two mistake is products, okay? What do I mean by products? Well, the big two, the big two that everybody that everybody wants, everybody bites on, but nobody buys. What are they? Healthy food and cold food. Cold food, I mean like sandwiches and um, items like that that are perishable items that don't go into your normal snack machine. So what happens is HR department, whoever is running the vending they get a lot of feedback that they need healthy vending and that they need a sandwich or that they need um, an extra something different than that's in the snack machine. Unless the account warrants it, I would say 90% of the time, 95% of the time, the account will never buy the uh, refrigerated food to make it profitable. Now, if you have to do it as a little bit of a... Um, not a commission, but as a little bit of a perk to have the account, you know, healthy food, something you can, you can throw in there. You know, we do, we have a, um, a few cold food machines where now we can't really sell much because of uh, COVID. They won't allow it, but where we would sell, you know, chicken sandwiches, hamburgers, hot pockets, lunchables, uh, things like that. Um, the majority of the time though, if they tell you that they want cold food in their machines, they tell you, that they want uh, cold food in the machines, people are not going to buy it. That's just flat out the fact of it, the fact of the matter that I've experienced. Now, maybe more people um, are able to uh, produce, but
but really you've got to be, you've got to have a, an overnight shift. You've got to have a lot of volume of people for a, a food, a cold food uh, machine to make sense. Now, give you an example, give you an example of just um, three weeks ago, got a call from an account. The first, the first two, I'll, it was a canteen account. Okay. The first uh, two rules that I just talked about machines and products, they, uh, they dropped the ball on. It was a hundred people. So get, get this picture. Let me paint a picture for you guys. It was a hundred uh, person facility spread out over three different campuses. So around 30 people per building, they had a total of nine machines there. Three cold food uh, machines. I should have prepped up some of those pictures because I have pictures of the uh, pictures of the machines with empty slots. They and they were the account was complaining that they were uh, you know getting old food, expired food, and you know it's my job to educate them and say that that's not the reason that it's not uh, that's going bad is because people aren't buying it. People aren't buying those uh, those those items in the machines. So this campus. 100, 125 people, eight machines. The uh, the company Canteen put all of these machines out, which I think is a really big disconnect. Uh, some of these larger companies, you know, we're a small business. We're just a small vending operation. Okay, I, I try to be as efficient and as effective as possible. Some of these big companies they can afford to outlay for all these machines. They do a lot with Coke and Pepsi with the free drinks and. That or drink machines and they that they lease, but um, they can the, when the salesman comes around, they can guarantee all these machines because their salesman isn't paying for it. They don't understand they they've never been a driver, they've never been um, in front of them understand it. So they'll give the account everything they want. Whereas for someone like me who has a smaller uh, you know smaller business, that's way too much capital to outlay for something like that. Now I asked them, would you be willing to, you know, would you be willing to come down on the number of machines, which I understand the, the, the campus was kind of spread out and they, they wanted the machines, um, in there. So that's just what, uh, one of the, one of the main issues is they don't realize people don't buy the cold food in the machines and they don't warrant the number of, um, the number of machines on a location. So that's the first two machines and products, healthy food. Let's see here. Donuts. We got some donuts. Um, and, uh, yeah, I lost money on healthy products. The problem is the price point on healthy products is higher too. It costs more, it's more expensive for pistachios and beef jerky and, um, vegan pita buttercups. Okay. And so it's more expensive and people don't want to pay that higher price point. Unfortunately, think about it. If people bought it, vendors would put it in the machine. If people would buy banana flavored water in a can and not Mountain Dew, we would put that in the machine. Okay. People don't want it. The consumer doesn't want it. So you can try and jam it down people's throat or they can request it, but they're not going to buy it and make it, uh, make it profitable. Let's see here. David, what's up, David? Can we get Cliff Bars sold maybe two and three months exactly? And Cliff Bars, they're great. Love Cliff Bars, but they're not going to uh, they're not going to pay the price in the machine to make it to make it viable. So, you know, a little tip that we do at some of our bigger accounts, we'll put in some healthy items at basically break even. You know, not make a huge markup on them as a little perk so that they can uh, they can win a little bit. And we want to make our money on some of the other items. So that's just a, a little strategy to do. So number two is products. Again, healthy food. They're going to want healthy food, want cold food. It's your job to explain to them that, um, well, yeah, so let's get into that. How would you explain to the account that we're not going to put in uh, healthy food? Well, the first thing is you're not going to tell them that. You're going to say, absolutely, we can test that out. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Let's test out some uh, cold food options. What you're gonna What you're gonna do though, if the account warrants it, warrants a cold food machine, is say we're gonna test it out for a couple weeks, and then when these expire, if they expire, we're gonna have to phase that out. So um, that's one way to deal with it. 
is don't load up the machine, give them what they want. If the account makes it on drinks and, and soda or soda and snacks, and they want to add in a, uh, you know, a refrigerated food machine, if it's worth it, if the numbers make sense, you can try out the healthy food, don't fill it up. And then you have to fill it with uh, items, different items, but that's a whole nother show here. I'm trying to keep this. Let's get to the point, Adam. That'll be a, a show for a, uh, another night. So again, no, number three. Okay. Number three is terms. Some of these accounts think that, uh, let me get my, let me pull my, uh, number three terms. Some of these accounts think that you're in business to make them, uh, make them money, which in some cases, you know, commissions aren't bad. But when I've heard accounts, hotel specifically, um, that wanted 30% commission on gross sales, they wanted 30% commission. Now that's absolutely insane to me. And I'm not sure if they ever got that, but, um, that's the, the next, the, the number three is terms as far as commissions is the big one. Okay. Being able to, uh, not pay commissions is going to be a huge asset to you and in your business. You know, most people think you have to have to do a commission. I would say 90% of our accounts, we don't pay a commission. It goes into that whole beginning process of how you um, describe the value proposition of the vending service that you're providing. Okay. You've got to sell it as an amenity. You've got to sell it as, um, you know, a benefit, not as a money making opportunity. Now, this brings me to some of the some of the um, the things that I've noticed with some people that I've been working with is when, as you see in some of my other videos, I've gone over the the prospect pyramid, which is the danger zone at the bottom is an account that's in the danger zone, which is what most people can get a call back or they can get a machine into, like the barber shops or the the smaller fifty or under employees little office buildings or little tire shops. Okay. Most of these businesses are run by kind of small business entrepreneur people. So they're viewing a vending machine as a money-making opportunity. When you get to that next tier, when you get to the lower level, or you get to the medium level, or you get to the higher level, you know, some bigger corporate accounts or things like that, big manufacturing accounts, they don't view it as much as a um, as a money-making venture. So that's what I've noticed. If you stay in these lower level accounts, you're dealing with, with, with people who to their credit, they're trying to make a little extra money and extra income on, on the vending. And they don't see it as much as, uh, the service and the benefit that they're getting. So that's number three is terms. Make sure, um, make sure that you can get the terms and by terms. I mean that they agree on the first two that they agree on the number of machines, that they agree that, you know, you'll test out the products, you'll test out healthy products, but if it doesn't sell, you're not mandated to keep those in the machines. So, um, awesome. Do you guys, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments. Let me go back here and see if we have anything. What did you think? Did you like the uh, the information you're getting? If so, let me know. Jason, so I reached out to Coke about leasing and they told me they're getting out of full service and asked me to take over a few dozen accounts in my area using their asset, just buy from them. Let's see, he's got some buy product that is. And I'm small, only two full line locations currently. I would pay 30% to be in a good hotel, but the prices of the product would reflect that. Well, Jason, that is a um, denied. He's got a denied uh, little emblem there. That's funny. So um, a few things on that. First of all, I've done the lease route before with Pepsi. I've, I've gotten out of that. We now own all of our machines just because of the parameters in my area that they put on you as far as the buying limits, as far as the price that you have to buy the product at, et cetera. Um, we want to be in control of our machines and what we put in them. 
So as far as um, I, you'd have to know what the prices are. Ask me to take over a few dozen accounts. Is it only drinks? Um, what are the sales? You know, are they actually good accounts? Um, 30%, 30% uh, commission. Is that on gross sales? Is that on net sales? Um, you'd have to really dig into those numbers to know. Um, and then how many, how many locations are you taking over a few dozen accounts in your area? I'd counter to them, counter back at them and tell them, listen, I'm not, uh, we'll try it out. But 30%, is that going to the hotel? Yes. All drinks machines are doing 25 to hundred cases per year. Hmm. Is it bottles? Is it cans? Um, this is where, uh, let's see if you guys haven't, you guys should check out, I'm not trying to push it super hard, but the ebook that I have and the, um, the teachable stuff, the guide, it really, it really goes over, you know, in more detail, everything you need to know, you know, as far as learning the vending business, if I could pay someone a thousand dollars when I started six years ago to, to change my mindset and get me at, in the right frame of mind. Uh, I would have done it. i done it. Um, no problem. So that was my goal with putting this course together um, at hillvending.teachable.net. Two courses on there, one on locations, and then the full course comes with the one-on-one -on -one help is to actually help people uh, skip the mistakes. There's a good quote that I, that I love. Um, Make war with a multitude of counselors. Build your life around the vice of good allies. I think that's a, uh, you know, a pretty good, a pretty good quote. And in business, especially, especially in the vending business, I think now it makes sense even more to purchase and, and find mentors. If it's not, if it's not my, my courses or book or whatever, find someone in your area. Uh, let's see, Jason, I think was his name. Find someone in your area that's in vending, see if they have uh, any information uh, you'd be surprised how many of the bigger bigger vendors will you know give you some advice and let you know um, about the locations or about what what their thoughts are. So um, again, if we have any questions here, uh, thirty percent yes, all drinks. Okay, let me see. Both cans and bottles, mostly bottles. Okay, so you need to know how much are you getting for the bottles? How much are you selling for the bottles? And then uh, Coke, see the problem with Coca-Cola and Pepsi is they can pay 30% 30, 30 commission because they can get a bottle of Pepsi for freaking 12 cents. You know, who knows? I don't know their real cost, but it costs, if they're selling a can of Pepsi, uh, or a can of Coke or a bottle of Coke in the store for 50 cents, to the public, imagine the cost it costs for them to produce that and have their driver deliver it. It's a fraction because they own the bottling plant, they own everything. So they can pay a 30% commission where someone like you, Jason, who is not a, uh, you're paying a little bit higher cost, a lot higher cost. Um, you're not able to, you're not able to pay those margins. So if they want you to take over, absolutely make sure the terms are in, uh, in your favor though. So awesome. Appreciate you guys uh, logging on here. If you uh, have any have any future topics and you're watching this back, drop them in the comments on anything um, you'd like to hear about. Here's some of the things that we have coming up. Some of the topics that we have coming up for um, YouTube. We're going to have some new videos coming out. The three things that we're doing now at a few accounts for sanita sanitation purposes, as far as um, what we're doing to try and get ahead of the curve so that we can uh, we cannot be shut down, shut down by a health department at one, at one location. But again, these are other videos um, that we're working on in the future. So uh, really appreciate you guys hopping on here tonight. And again, remember the three the biggest mistake, if you have if you have questions, ask someone in your area, ask someone, get find help, but don't make these mistakes. Just because an account wants the machines, they want the product, 
or they want their commission terms, you don't have to agree to those terms. You have to work the deal. And the only way you're going to learn that is by one, making the mistake yourself, making your mistake to sell your, yourself and losing thousands and thousands of dollars. You'll lose thousands and thousands of dollars if you don't listen to what I'm saying. If you make this mistake, if you order in the machines for 10 machines for a hotel and, they, and you put in healthy machines and all the stuff doesn't sell, do you have a contract in place with them to where they will not, uh, where they will buy those machines back? No, you're going to have to make those payments. You're going to have to sell those machines and you're going to take a haircut on them because you're not going to get the, they're not going to get the resale value unless, unless you buy the machines that I recommend. Windows, AMS, USI, you know, the brands that I love. And remember, as I'm signing off here, remember the three keys to vending location, machines, service. If you master those three, you'll be in uh, and you'll be in great shape. So again, hillvending.com. You guys can check that out forward slash ebook, Krispy Kreme machine. Um, if you're interested in the courses and the guide location course, everything on how to get a location is right there and the vending business blueprint real quick guys this vending business blueprint isn't just like some little little gimmick okay this thing look how many look look what's included in this 80 videos okay 80 plus videos broken in six different modules six different modules and i'm going to include one-on-one one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one. so you can ask me whatever questions you want to ask. And you can go on this too, and you can look at every single video that's on there. You can look at all the titles of all the videos. So if you have question, you can check that out. So awesome. Appreciate you guys being on here. Like I said, I'm going to do some more of these going forward. But remember, until next time, keep and your snacks fresh.